user, and, and that's about the extent of it. Being able to offload those logs to a log server uh, to try to maintain some integrity would be really be good too. Use better HTTP daemon, HTTPS by default, and then I would always recommend to any vendor, you know, you want to keep yourself a moving target. So modify those, you know, banners, reduce that fingerprint. If you see your devices showing up in Shodan or other uh, uh, search engines like that, you know, modify it so that your customers uh, can get some more protection down the road. And of course, you know, FTP Telnet, uh, moving those to secure protocols as well. Customers, customers got to push back. They got to demand better security. They got to go all the way down the, the chain here. So starting from the, the vendors and then going to the third party resellers, all those local guys coming in, print this stuff out, hand it to them and say, you know, what are you guys doing about this? How are you insuring us? Got to manage this stuff just like any other system. You know, security reviews, the patching, the change management, you know, all that tedious stuff that is, uh, is so necessary. And then of course the technical side, you know, isolating these and, you know, using VLANs and Mac auth, VPNs, restricting IP, good stuff. So one of the outcomes of this, and this was actually sent to me, this was sent to me by a, uh, a competitor of S2. And they said, hey, did you see this letter that went out to the integrators? And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And it's uh, from John L. Moss, the CEO, to our system integrators. I have had a number of questions recently about how to secure network physical security systems. I'm writing to address this important subject. So the threat, this may sound like paranoia, but it's not. There are thousands of people you don't know all over the world who are actively trying to break into your new typo security systems right now. Uh, in a physical security world, we are not used to dealing with invisible threats from malicious people who don't know where we are and thousands of miles away. We have them. So it's great to see this kind of uh, recognition um, from a, uh, you know, a company and, and reaching out to their integrators. But this was forced recognition of the problem. You know, this became, this, this letter is a result of me going out there, me, you know, letting CERT um, know about these vulnerabilities, communicating with CERT. Huge props to CERT. CERT CC and US CERT uh, because uh, uh, I couldn't have done it without them. And uh, those guys pushed too. Um, they, 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 they pushed these guys and it was great to see. But a problem with that, not with CERT but with this letter, is that, you know, he goes down, he continues on, hackers, hackers bad. <laughs> and then, you know, here's protecting your system, right? Which is great. So put your systems behind a firewall change your passwords, use strong passwords, VLANs, VPNs, maintain your software. So that's, that's, that's great to see. But then up here, how we deal with vulnerabilities. And he says, um, S2 works with CERT, a nonprofit organization that responsibly handles vulnerability resolution. CERT funded into part by, you know, DHS, learns about vulnerabilities. Well, the thing is, is they reference CERT, US CERT here, but I coordinated mainly with CERT CC. And so somebody who's a security person and reads this says, you don't even know who the organizations are that you're talking to, okay, about this. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, we, we want to change. You know, we want to make sure that when a company puts out a statement like this that they actually are referring to the, to the right people, security people who have assisted us in driving these issues to resolution. You know, got to give them the respect and where it's due. So back at CarolinaCon, which is actually a great conference, very intimate, highly recommend it, and those guys did a great job there. So this, they recorded me and it, it found its way onto the web. And what I had made there is an offer, an open offer to any vendor in this space. And here's the, here's the offer. You make a donation to a nonprofit like EFF and you get a tax deduction for that, for that donation, okay? In turn, I, in recognition of your donation, this isn't a quid pro quo, in recognition of your donation, which could be uh, an amount based on going back 10 years ago, the line was people spend more on their coffee budgets than they do on security. That's definitely not the case anymore, but with product security, it is in some, in some cases. So I say, okay, give your coffee budget to EFF in the donation, or um, I'm also considering the, uh, 
uh, political contributions done by the top executives. Okay, that's that's public information, and uh, it's also free speech. Okay, on on their side, if you're not following that at all, corporations you know, now have now can give political contributions, and it's free speech, and there may not even be any disclosure at that. So, kind of, kind of, create up with come up with creative ways here of uh, you know setting a price point. I'll sign an NDA, okay, and then I'll do an eval in a box. I'll do a report and an out brief, and I may pull in other engineers under uh, this type of testing and have them under NDA as well. So I've done this with a colleague at work, and uh, the John Sawyer, uh, who's uh, uh, right down there, and uh, throwing the support. And it's great because you know having two minds is always better than one, and uh, he uh, compliments a lot of my skills. Uh, uh, so you know I'm not coming in here with an ego on this stuff. It's like you know obviously there's going to be things I can miss. If I can bring in another smart uh, person, um, that's fantastic, and uh, all the better. So. You know, we set this up. I'll do an eval box, report, and an out brief. And then planning here is additional advice for product security response. So, you know, when talking with these vendors, uh, do a security page, have an email, uh, point of contact, your PGP key up there, all the good things that we like to see, right? I mean, how many times on the mailing list are we seeing, does anybody have a security contact for X company? Um, you know, it's. Uh, it's tedious, and in this day and age, you know, we just don't have the time for that. Introductions to CERT CC, US CERT, and then uh, uh, suggesting uh, strategic security conference uh, support. You know, there's some good ways that companies can um, um, uh, enable security conferences uh, without seeing like a suck up or without throwing out the uh, uh, too much vendor crap. So here it is so far. So far, I've got approached by uh, I've been approached by two EDAC companies, and uh, the process has been talk, establish a trust, which is everything, right? I mean, you got to have that trust, and that's taken some some handholding and back and forth. But we, and there's some trepidation. One in particular was, "Hey, Sean, this isn't going to end up on some blog post, is it?" You know, and that's those are the kinds of fears and, and concerns that you need to assuage with uh, with these people and say, "No, you know, we got this under NDA." These are the objectives. I'm not looking to make money off of this. You know, I'm looking to better the security. It's good reputation building. It's good experience for me too, uh, of course. So the first company donated to EFF, and they enabled uh, uh, me to win this uh, contest. There was plenty of other great people who supported me in this effort too. Props again to John Sawyer. He threw the flag out there and, and uh, got got some folks to contribute, but. Together, we raised $2,560 uh, uh, for EFF uh, just from this one evaluation and, and from the support of folks. Got the room, got the nifty badge, met some really cool people uh, through this, and uh, I think it's just kind of a unique way to uh, uh, enable some security testing. So I kind of went quickly through this, and um, maybe a little faster than I wanted to. Too many Mountain Dews, but uh, I'm certainly open to any questions, and um, don't feel obligated to come, you know, up here now. I mean, I'm going to be around, so feel free to grab me. My contact information is here, and that's it.